Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, let's learn and discuss about feline leprosy syndrome. So, feline leprosy syndrome, as we know, is a bacterial infection, and the bacteria that causes is Mycobacterium species. There are different type of Mycobacterium that can cause this infection. Most commonly, Mycobacterium leprimurium, Mycobacterium tuberculosis, Mycobacterium avium can cause this infection. So mycobacterium is an acid fast bacilli that likes to be inside the cell. So comparing to all other animals, cats have been documented uh, to get this infection more commonly than dogs or other animals. There could be a reason for this because cats like to hunt and whenever they hunt an infected rodent they can contract this infection okay there are two types of mycobacterial infection one is leprosy syndrome and the other one is opportunity opportunistic mycobacteriosis we should be able to differentiate between these two conditions so commonly cats less than four years have been documented to get this infection more and cats that are immunocompromised from ailments chronic ailments due to viral infections like FELV, FIV or other metabolic conditions can also get this infection the clinical science is mostly the owner will bring the cat with lots of nodules and these nodules are rapidly progressive and they spread locally these nodules are like raised fleshy tumor like cutaneous or subcutaneous nodules they are not generally painful and the, the lesion ranges from a few millimeter to four centimeter in diameter and the lesion can, can occur anywhere in the body but it usually begins as a single nodule or a group of nodule in the head or in the limbs. Widespread cutaneous involvement tend to occur within two months and regional lymph node involvement can also be seen. And your important differential diagnosis here should also include opportunistic mycobacteriosis and other cutaneous nodular lesions and tumors coming to the diagnosis the best is to do an aspirate cytology and when you do an aspirate cytology after staining you will see a lot of neutrophils a lot of macrophages and you can also see giant cells and you can see intracellular acid fast bacilli if you have done an acid fast staining or if you have done a regular diff pick staining you will see long filamentous structures that are not stained that's because they have high lipid content around the, the cell wall so they don't stain in um, diff quick and this is exactly how they look and you can also go for dermatohistopathology where you excise the nodule and send it for histopathology where they do acid fast staining and to see if there are any intracellular acid fast bacilli and if you want to make sure what subspecies it is then you can proceed with PCR and you can also consider mycobacterial culture although it takes a very long time to get the results coming to the treatment op options you have to either you can surgically remove the nodule if the nodule is small and it is located in a le in a place where it can be successfully excised if the lesion is in an awkward position in an awkward place where uh, surgical intervention is not possible then you should consider medical management so there are few medicines one is 
Clofam is in. You can use them. Um, you can administer at the dose of 8 to 10 milligrams per kg per loss once in a day. Or you can give 25 mg per cat per loss once in a day. Or 50 mg for a cat per loss once in two days. And you have to continue this medication for months even after the the lesions are have been clinically subsided and even after the cytology comes negative for acid phosphatase the other option here is clarithromycin 62.5 mg per cat per ross twice in a day and you have rifampin 10 to 15 mg per kg per ross once in a day so this was the case that we got in our clinic so you can actually see the nodular lesions caused by mycobacterium these are like cutaneous raised hairless growth that were not painful at all and when we did a cytology we saw like there were numerous filamentous bacteria which didn't stain well with diff quick and they were all inside macrophages and you can also see lots of degenerate neutrophils in the background so the cytological interpretation was septic biogranulomatous inflammation and the references for this presentation was taken from small animal dermatology textbook and atlas of canine and feline cytology i hope this video was informative thank you so much for watching